Coach Steiner, we were just talking. Uh, you're 40 years old, right? We'll be. We'll be, we'll be in a month. You'll be 40 years old. So are your brother. Yeah. Who's older, by the way? I am. How much? One match. One match? Seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we were talking, and you are an incredibly – you love to work out. Okay? You like to – you still roll a lot. You lift hard. You run. You do everything. Um and the guy, it's a great example for your athletes. Um, to you, it's, it doesn't seem like anything. Um, why is that? Why, why, when I talk about, you know, how hard you still train, why, why is it, doesn't it seem like a big deal to you? I don't know. It's just become a way of life. You know, I mean, it's, it's when I got into the sport or when, really when I was growing up, I saw my parents work. They worked very hard to get their feet on the ground, you know, they had my brother and I, when they were 17 and 18 years old, and uh, I'm sure it was a, it was a struggle for many years, but they, they just, you know, they weren't going to get, they weren't, weren't going to not support us or not support their family, they just went to work, and, and I knew that, they, that by working they could succeed in life and, and make things work, and, and that's really where I think that I, I learned my work ethic from because I saw them all the time getting up in the morning at 7 in the morning, 6 in the morning, and going till 8, 10 at night every day. And it was, so it was just a way of, that's the way that it was. So for me to go in and work out a couple times a day when I was an athlete or two, maybe three times a day, big deal. You know, I had time in between there where I didn't do a damn thing. You know, but my parents were busting their butt day in and day out. You know, so it, you know, it was taught to me at an early age that basically that value will work. You know, if you if you do work hard and you put thing, everything into it, um, and good things will can happen. Not that they always do, but you're going to have a lot better chance to succeed if you put the work into it. So, I mean, now, you know, I would, still working out now. I, I like the sport. I, I like to wrestle. I, I, I want to be able to get in there and help the guys as much as I can. I can't do that if I'm out of shape and, and not keep myself strong and I'm going to get beat up. You know, so it's, that's part of my job is to keep myself fit so I can help these guys as much as possible. You said to me earlier this week, you think that getting back in shape is how a lot of people get hurt. Yeah, I think when a lot of injuries happen or when people, they fall off. You know, in the spring of the year, the, after the season, they let themselves go for two months and don't do a thing, anything. And then, or in the summer, they don't do anything. And then they try to come back in the fall and get it all back in six weeks. You know, and that's, then your body's put under a lot, awful lot of stress. You know, to, to come back and get yourself in shape. I think if you can keep yourself at, a, at least the average level of conditioning or above average, you don't have that stress on the body because your body's used to it. Yeah, so I think it's easier to maintain uh, a certain level of conditioning or something than it is to try to get yourself back in into it. Does Terry still go as hard as you? Yeah, I, I know he does. I don't know if he's on the mat quite as much or, you know, probably battling on the mat as much, but I know when he works out or he goes out for a run or he goes into the weight room to lift, it, he, he, work, he lifts hard. He, he runs hard. I'm, I'm sure he does. I'm sure that's the way of life. It's the way we grew up. So. You did the, uh, what was it, Hood to the Coast run? Yeah. All right. And, Last year. <laughs> and uh, you were telling me a story. And it's kind of a testament that you, you talk about your work ethic all the time and, and going hard. And you have one speed when it comes to running. Okay. Talk about what happened to you the hood of the coast run. Well, it, a lot of times when I run, I, I I try to go out at a comfortable pace, but I you get back into that that training mode, you know, where you're trying to get as much out of everything you, you do. And and I don't like people in front of me. Uh, so you're a front runner. I, I don't like... I don't like to run behind someone. I never have. And, um, so in this hood to coast, you know, there's, there's 
12,000 people. You know, so you're going to have some people in front of you, when you especially when you start in the middle of the pack. You know? and so, you know, you, you just, I tried to not let people buy me. Well, towards the end of the race, the those teams that are, you know, those fast teams that are coming by or athletes that are coming by. Professionals? Yeah, professionals. They're, <laughs> they're starting to catch you and, you know, <laughs> climbing and, you know, and then they start passing in one instance where we had about a two mile incline on this one, the second phase of it that I had and and uh, I felt this guy coming behind me or I kind of heard him and all of a sudden he's trying to come by me and I'm trying to stay up with him and I I kind of knew at, at some point I wasn't going to be able to, well it didn't take long, it was about 15 seconds I tried staying with him and he blew by me and it just it's a little disheartening, you know, someone blowing by you, but, but it, you know, that's, that's what they do, you know, but it, it bugs me. Yeah, it, it bugs me. I don't like to run behind people. So. You talk about that, you know, I was talking to you about world teams, you know, and, you, you know, you never were number one on the world team. And you, you talk about things burning you. Do the things that burn you, like never getting on a world team, and maybe not reaching goals from the past. Do those motivate you to work, get up and go work like you do every day? Sure. You know, I it burns me. There's, there's a few things that I set out to do in this sport that, that I never got. And, you know, the, the loss I had my senior year in the NCAs, that that, burn, that burns. And and then not making a world team or an Olympic team, that, that it's something that will drive me in, in my coaching career the rest. The rest of my coaching career, you know, the, hopefully I can get someone to that point and and they can get to get that goal or make the team and win that gold medal, you know, because I never had a never and then I had a chance. I didn't get it done, you know. And the, but it's something that yeah I got to live with, you know. The, but it's easier to live with. I I felt I give everything I had, but it's still it still hurts, you know. It still hurts for sure. What's it like working under Jim Zaleski? You you were with him. As an athlete, okay, at, at Iowa, and now you're here under him as assistant coach. Uh, what's this experience been like for you? Yeah, Jim has always been a a great mentor for me. Uh, you know, a great friend. Uh, he's someone that I felt as you know when I was as an athlete, he was he was a coach over me in college. He was someone that looked over or looked out for me, um, and and always wanted the best. For his guys, just like he does now, he wants the best for his athletes and is looking out for them. And you know, so when I, I had the opportunity to go back under him, um, I jumped at it. You know, because I had a lot of respect for him as a coach. And and it's not just how he coaches; it's it's how he lives his life. You know, I, uh, we have a good relationship. Not that, not that we always agree on everything, but I don't think. That would be good either if we agreed on everything. But you know, for the most part, we see things in a lot of the same light. And um, I like how he conducts his life and uh, how he leads. Last thing, I'm gonna let you off the hook here. Why are you so nice? I don't know. You know, I, a lot of I don't think you have to be a, a jerk to be, you know to be successful. You know, and I think there's a lot of people that aren't. You know, there are nice people that are successful, but there's that certain thing in this sport, or maybe in sports in general, where you got to be the bad guy to be as successful. And I, I don't believe that. You got to be able to turn it on, and you got to be able to turn it off. And when I step on the mat, and I'm gonna give it everything I have, and I'm gonna go after someone. But or when I was an athlete, that's how it was. And but when I step off the mat. I can turn it off as well, you know, and that's, you know, probably probably a lot like my father in that in that regards, you know, he was able to turn things on and turn it off at when he needed to. So that's where the laid back mentality comes yeah, from. Yeah, for sure. Off the mat. For off sure. the mat. My, it comes from my dad. Now my mom, she was the fire, she was the fire behind it, you know, for sure. She's the one that she had the the quick temper. She had the she was going to come at you, you know. So I probably got the fight from her and the level-headedness from my, from Dad. You know. So and it was, it's a good, good combo. And it balances it out. So.
That's where your balance comes from, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, uh... That's good balance. All right, Troy. Well, hey, thanks for sitting down and talking to me, man. Uh, I'll, and I'll be back out here, and we'll uh, hopefully we can get some technique out of you sometime. We yeah. can wring some technique out of you. Yeah, yeah, good. It's been good having you out, and hopefully we can um, we give the, the Beaver Nation here something to cheer about. You know, I think we're finally going to be able to put a team here together that's competitive, and I think we got a good group of guys. But you know, we'll see. We got work to do, and. I'm excited for the season to see see what we can do. Well, we're going to see right off the rip with you guys. I'll be out here to check out what yeah, you guys Yeah, we got a big are. one right away, November 22nd with with uh, Wisconsin coming out and, and Boise coming over. So, yeah, we're going to have to be ready to go right away. They're, they're two good teams that, uh, you know, are, are doing are doing good things. Their coaching staffs are putting putting the work in and the time in, and, and the, they got good kids in the program. So it's uh, it's going to be a good challenge for us right off the bat. All right, thanks, Troy.